Hi, my name is Brian Capo, and welcome to this week's Ask Brian part of our weekly podcast. This, I'm gonna, uh, in this episode, I'm going to talk about the first question I got, which basically asks, what is chi-squared filtering? And the person who asked me this sent me a specific paper they were looking at. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the paper in the video here. Uh, the paper was comparing machine learning algorithms for predicting mortality and uh, from cardiac patients. And um, there was a kind of a bit of a throwaway line in the paper that, that talks about uh, using chi-squared tests to filter variables. So the person was asking, what is this process of chi-squared filtering? Um, now this isn't a terribly, I, I don't think this is like a, I think if you were to go to a statistics department or a machine learning group or something like that and say, what's chi-squared filtering? I don't think everyone would raise their hand, but kind of everyone would have a sense of what you meant because there's two terms there and they're both fairly well understood. So the first is the chi-squared distribution in the chi-squared test. So you wind up with a chi-squared distribution when you square, or you wind up with a chi-squared with one degree of freedom when you square a normal distribution. Now, why is this important? Well, we wind up with a normal distribution all the time because of the central limit theorem. So we wind up with the chi-squared distribution when we tend to like square things, square central limit theorem type things. One of the most common ways in which we wind up with a chi-squared distribution is when we talk about contingency tables for looking at independence between variables. So for example, in this paper, if you were looking at say gender and, um, and whether or not uh, the person had diabetes, um, you would get a count of, you, you had a large sample of people and you would get counts in these four cells. And if you wanted to test independence of these two variables, whether your diabetes status is apparently independent of your gender, what you would look at is the difference between the counts that you would that you got in the individual cells and how they would relate to the kind of expected counts that you would expect under an assumption of independence. That's the classic chi-squared test. You uh, compare those counts and it turns out that people apply the central limit theorem but because the the test statistic is kind of squared, you wind up with a chi-squared distribution, and that's one of the famous so-called chi-squared tests. So what the chi-squared test in this application is, it's looking at independence between a categorical predictor and a categorical outcome, or two categorical predictors themselves, neither one of them being an outcome. This is a little like looking at, say, an R-squared between two variables. You don't have to name one of them as the outcome or the predictor. Okay. So if you're doing chi-squared filtering, okay, the second term in that is filtering. So what's a filter? Well, a physical filter is something that lets some stuff go through and stops other stuff. So hopefully you're letting the good stuff go through and stopping the bad stuff. So if you're filtering some, some broth that you made, right, you're, you're filtering out all the bits of stuff that were helping to generate the flavor and just the nice flavorful liquid is what's getting strained through. So anyway, when a signal processor uses the term filtering, what they mean is they're usually trying to select or screen things so that the good ones come through and the bad ones don't. So probably the most famous example of this is in signal processing when you have a time series of some sort and you're trying to filter out noise. So you get a noisy signal and you filter it. And this is very often done, for example, uh, when you have um, Fourier transforms, you Fourier transform your signal which breaks it into uh, the frequency components and then you decide what frequencies you want to look at and what frequencies you want to filter out. Okay, in this case what they're using is they're using chi-squared tests to filter variables. So uh, one way you could do this for example is you could take each one of your predictors if they were all categorical and your outcome which is also categorical in this case and you could compare each of them with the chi-squared test and look at the ones that have the, the least evidence of independence, right? They appear the most dependent and use those as your prediction. So this would, just, um, this would just be looking at which of your variables are most marginally associated with your outcome. And I say marginally in the sense that without regard to the other variables, right? Because you're testing them one at a time separately. Whereas your machine learning algorithm that you then put your variables into will combine them together with fancy interactions and things like this that machine learning algorithms are good at. Okay, so one way in which you might do some sort of pre-screening like this if you have a lot of variables would be to 
um, run, you know, test, compare each of them with your outcome, and then when you've done that, uh, you know, uh, select the ones that are most associated with your outcome and use those in your machine learning algorithm so that your machine learning algorithm runs faster and doesn't get bogged down with lots and lots of variables. So that's one way that they might have been using it. Another way that they might have been using it in this particular paragraph that they were talking about that the person asked, um, they were talking about concern over covariance between multiple variables in a machine learning algorithm. Now very often you don't want, you want independent predictors for a variety of reasons. Um, one, one of the reasons is the independent predictors will be bringing independent information. If I have two predictors and they're highly related, then clearly one of them is kind of redundant, right? And, and then in, in classic regression models, we start to worry about things like variance inflation when we're interested in inference. But in machine learning, surely it can't be helpful to have lots and lots and lots of redundant variables in your algorithm that it has to sift through and work on. Uh, and you want more independent predictors. So another way in which they could have done this is they could have compared variables and seen ones that were highly related to one another and used that is a screening mechanism to try to only wind up with um, predictors that are mostly independent or less, um, uh, um, less dependent in their machine learning algorithm. And, and reading the paragraph, that seems to be they were doing something like this, though they didn't give a lot of, a lot of details on that step. It was kind of a throwaway line. But overall, you know, that's, that wasn't the major thrust of their paper. This was just saying we, we, them saying we need some way to to cut down on a lot of redundant predictors in our machine learning algorithm. So we used a bunch of chi-squared tests to do that. So that's how you should interpret that sentence. Okay, so that was a pretty specific question this week, but we learned about the chi-squared distribution. We learned about the definition of the word filter. And um, next week I'll have another video. Uh, if you get a chance, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, I'll try and have videos every week. The, um, uh, and if you also get a chance in the description of the YouTube video, you have a place where you can submit your question and also a place where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter. Okay, thanks a lot and I'll see you next week.